guys, it's Loretta with Sparrow Hawker Designs. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to uh, try to show you how I did the images on uh, transferred to fabric. Um, those were done just on a very, very, very cheap white fabric. This is a little bit thicker, so we'll see how this turns out. <laughs> and uh, what you need is some gesso. It does not matter what brand. You can also use um, Mod Podge, so I'm assuming that you should be able to use any kind of gel medium, but I don't really know. I know for sure you can use gesso and uh, Mod Podge. You are also going to need, at least to, to get it to look like mine, you're going to need some beeswax. Uh, it doesn't really matter, like, I guess how you buy it. I know it comes in bricks and it comes in these little pellets. Um, I got these at Hobby Lobby. I'm assuming if you are somewhere else in the world, there, um, if you have a craft store, there's probably a candle making section. So that's probably where you'll find them. Or maybe if, you, if you're lucky enough to just have a candle making store somewhere. Uh, yeah, and you're just gonna need a little bit for each picture. And you're gonna need an iron and a paintbrush. And I use um, a little squirt bottle and an old towel. So what you're gonna do is, uh, if you can open your gesso. <laughs> I can't open my gesso. Oh my gosh, are you serious? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and yeah, make sure your gesso is open. <laughs> Um, and you know what? I have never tried this with um, clear gesso. I don't know what the results would be, but that seems like something I need to try. So yeah, do you know? Don't don't be afraid to experiment. And then you just cover it. And then you put it down on your fabric. Now please know that it, your image is going to be in the reverse. So if you've got words, if there's any text or anything, um, it's going to be backwards. So, yeah. Alright, and I just make sure I get it all flattened out. This is what the other side looks like. And then I set it aside to dry for however many hours it takes. Uh, a lot of a lot of people say to do it 24 hours. I have not found that you really need that long. It's usually about five or six. But if you used a hair dryer, you could um, speed up the process. Uh, let's see. Okay. And then you're gonna take it after it's dry. I've already wet this and you soak it in some water. And I can tell you right there, it's already gonna start to come up. And so then you start, <laughs> I just start in a corner where there's not anything important. You know, like it's not anybody's space. And I just start peeling it away. Hope you can see that. You just, you're gonna make a huge mess and it's gonna take a while, like a long time. <laughs> and uh, yeah so I kind of go pretty rough and pretty quick over this first layer to get it off I don't really slow down and start being really careful until I get down to the other layers that are closer to the actual image um, and a lot of times you're going to lose the edges like right here I've lost that edge already uh, which is great I mean that adds to the really cool quality of the photo. Um, the reason for that, the only reason I can think for that is because um, uh, the gesso isn't quite as thick maybe on the edges. I don't know. I can't decide exactly why. But yeah. And this, like I said, this it takes forever. It takes me like, I don't know, half an hour per photo probably to get it completely, you know, right. Um, yeah. And 
when I get past that initial chunky top layer, then I start kind of going in circles and I kind of start going a really light touch. So there are lots of videos on how to do this. Um, Lori Marie Jenkins has one, uh, Katarina Giglio has one, I think, um, uh, oh, I can't remember her name. There's another mixed media artist that has one up. She doesn't really do videos anymore. I mean, her videos are up, but she doesn't really add anything new anymore. Um, oh, why can I not think of her name? Well, anyway, uh, yeah, so they have, all of them have videos up on how to do this. This is a, a fairly um, common thing to do in mixed media. And if you don't do it on fabric, you can also do this on other materials. So that's why it's pretty, pretty common in mixed media. So yeah, so what I do is I just um, turn on Netflix or <laughs> a couple of like crafting videos or, you know, something that I what to what or I put on an audiobook because I don't really have to watch that I can just listen to it and I kind of just set aside like half the day to do this you know it if I'm gonna do several images and you can see this guy's face is starting to come through so now I will start being really really gentle like half the amount of pressure that I was putting on before and you just when you start seeing those you know pull up like that you just got to be really really careful so, okay, so I'm going to stop the camera here and I'm going to keep going so that I can show you what the wax does for it. Um, so, yeah, so I'll be right back. Okay, so... This took me about 30 minutes to do. Um, here's all the paper crumbs. And then here's what it looks like. So if I let this completely dry, this would get a really white, a hazy white film over it. And you wouldn't be able to see anything. I also want to point out, like right here, you see that pucker? Let's see where, yeah. That little pucker there. That is where I did not get enough gesso or where I didn't smooth it out and make sure it adhered. So if I kept rubbing that, all that would come up. Uh, as you can see here, your edges are the place you're most likely to lose your picture. So you gotta be really careful if you have a photo like this one where the uh, faces go all the way to the edge because I almost lost both of them. <laughs> but I realized what was happening and stopped. Okay, so now uh, what I do is I take a little bit of, um, well, hang on a minute, you want to get an old towel or an uh, old ironing board with an ironing board cover that you don't, you don't care if you ruin. Um, and then I put just, I don't know. Just some wax pellets there. I don't know how many to tell you. Just about that many. <laughs> I don't know, that's maybe like a half a teaspoon maybe? Or no, probably about a half a tablespoon actually. Um, now you can do this wax thing just with regular images. Um, in fact, I think uh, Chrissy Frew is the one that I saw do this like this with her images. Um, she just, uh, she waxes them. In mixed media, they call this encaustic, like encaustic art or whatever. I've seen some mixed media artists, like, literally dunk an entire, like, children's, like a girl, little girl's dress down in wax. Um, so yeah. Then, you want to cover it. I'm just using parchment paper, but you could use just, I don't know, just a paper bag, really. Um... And then, because you don't want to get the, you don't want to get it on your iron, obviously. And then, you just put your hot iron down. And just 
couple seconds to make sure that um, all of the wax melts. And then you raise it up. And there you go. Now, uh, And you can see how clear it made all those images. It's not dry yet, but it will dry. Now, obviously, you know, this is <laughs> labor intensive to say the least. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys how I did it because uh, some of you might want to try it. Um, and just towards the end when I am peeling the... Um, the gesso off of the image. I'm just kind of doing a very light and I just keep wetting it and very light. I start out kind of a little bit thicker with um, you know like a circular motion and then I just start peeling like the big pieces off like these big pieces you know they'll come off like that and then once you get down to something like this then I'm just very lightly going over it. So make sure that you get the gesso on good and thick and everywhere so that um, it makes a good connection to the fabric um, because if you do that you will be less likely to lose uh, part of your image which I actually I mean the whole reason I do this is because I like that look of losing some of the image uh, but you want to be careful that you don't lose it in the wrong places so yeah otherwise I would just print them on fabric and if you print them on fabric they come out perfect looking rather than all grungy and broken looking <laughs> I like this broken look you know um, yeah anyway so um, the other mixed media artist I remembered her name Stephanie Ani A-U-N-E so I think her Katerina Giglio, that's G-I-G-L-I-O, and Lauren Marie Jenkins, I think, all have videos on how to do this as well. Um, but, yeah, it definitely, it, I know some people think, find this very therapeutic, you know, like if they get into like a zen, <laughs> um, and other people absolutely hate it. And when I first tried it, my very first time, I probably ruined I know five of them before I finally started. Um, <laughs> it, it, you kind of get this connection with the fabric and the image where you kind of know when you're pushing too hard or when you're going too far or how much more you can manipulate it before you ruin it. <laughs> but it takes some practice. Um, but I certainly love the results. Anyway, so this is what's going to be in my... Um, uh, in my fabric journal that I'm making are these uh, waxed so they're they're um, gesso transfer images that I have waxed so there you go um, I hope you'll give it a try and that you won't be cussing me too much while you're doing it <laughs> and I will talk to you later bye